Number three is one where it's not really in a very easily factorable form. I don't think I could do that in my head without using some really fancy tricks. Um, so, but they do give me this information that it goes to the point one comma zero. So the first thing that I'm going to do is make a little graph that goes like this. I'm going to put some ticks. I can add more later if I need to. And I'm going to say it goes to the point one zero. Now. Um, you got to be really careful with your negatives because it gets changed a lot in these problems. So the point one zero means that um, x minus one is a factor. Now I'm going to use synthetic division to divide to divide x minus one into this, um, and to do that I change the sign again. So I do a positive one, and then I draw my synthetic division bar, um, and I write the coefficients of this guy. So that's 1, 5, 2, and negative 8. So write 1, 5, 2, and negative 8. If you don't like synthetic division, you could always use polynomial division, but it takes so much longer. Um, and this is just a really good tool to have as we move along. So um, I drop the 1, the first one, or this one right here. Uh, now I multiply this guy by that guy. Um, that gives me 1. Uh, now I add the other 5 and the 1. That gives me 6. Now I multiply the 6 and the 1 over here, and that gives me 6. And then I add these guys, 8, multiply by 1, write it here, 8, add, get 0. Remember, that tells me that my remainder is equal to 0, so it's good because that tells me that x minus 1 is an actual factor of this thing. The 1, 6, 8 corresponds with x squared plus 6x plus 8. If this for some reason was like a 28, 24, then either a 28 or a 24 would show up there. But this, I don't, th this is a lot easier than that. Um, I can just take this guy and factor it. So that factors to x plus 2 times x plus 4, which tells me that I have zeros up. Oh, I didn't make enough. So I'll make this a little bit longer, put a tick. I have zeros at negative 2 and then at negative 4 as well. The mother function is clearly an x cubed. It's also clearly positive. So I'm going to go like this through. No weird multiplicity rules. Boink, boink. And that is my answer. Oh, I also need to make sure that I include the y-intercept. Um, it says graph the function and include the intercepts. So I'm going to put a little dot here. To do that, it's actually massively easy. I don't have to do any work to get there. The y-intercept is what I get when I plug in 0, which this term, this term, this term are all going to go to 0. So my y-intercept is just negative 8. Uh, so I'm going to write negative 8 like that. And I believe that's it.